Good morning. Um, so welcome to the Strimsy community call on the 30th of um, June. Um, I'm standing in for Jakob today, who's our usual host. Um, and so we've got quite a few things on the agenda, so I guess we can get started. So the first one is uh, this item, um, which is about being able to uh, suspend a Kafka cluster um, and then presumably unsuspend it at a later time. So we're sort of, uh, I guess you could call it a sort of a hibernation feature. Um, does someone want to um, lead the way on this? Yeah, sure. I added it for discussion. I wasn't sure if questions and issues was the right section, but it's a discussion. So I guess so. Um, but yeah, um, I thought this was an interesting discussion point that was brought up. Um, there were two different people in the community that were asking questions around this. Um, and I thought it'd be interesting to um, get a wider audience to understand is this something that we would be interested in looking at? Um, I know that I haven't necessarily seen like production use cases for this, but I think there was someone, um, Ramesh was commenting saying that um, this is interesting for people running managed services perhaps of what's the, is there a way you can use Strimsy to basically sort of pause your Kafka and stop using up resources, but then continue some point later. Um, so I just wanted to bring it to a wider audience. To see what people think. Yeah, sure. So I'm, uh, I think sort of I commented um, yesterday with sort of a point there. So the, the use case that's that sort of um, started the discussion was one to do with um, testing. Um, whereas for the use case that Ramesh has got, um, it might be more of a problem to do with uh, topic retention settings. So if, we see, if you sort of hibernate for a, a long time, then when you bring the cluster back up, then um, log segments which have passed their retention time would get deleted before uh, any of those messages uh, possibly could have been consumed if they hadn't have been consumed at the point that it got hibernated. So maybe for that use case, that's sort of something that um, would be a problem or maybe not, I don't know. Um, but I mean, it's certainly nothing that we sort of had um, sort of, I think, planned to, to work on as a, a project so far. Um, but obviously, if you know um, people sort of wanted to contribute uh, in some way to make it work or to uh, document how this can be done, because I, I think with the, the combination of the uh, existing ability to pause reconciliation um, and then um, delete the stateful set, then I think you can probably sort of make this work today um, in some form or other, uh, it would probably be good if, you know, that was a, like a properly documented thing. If this is something that, you know, we think people, you know, want generally as a feature, um, and possibly some sort of system testing to ensure that it, um, does work into the future as well. So certainly I wouldn't object to, um, a contribution along those lines. I don't know if anyone else has got any thoughts on this. Would it make sense maybe to ask Ramesh to create a proposal? Um, well, I guess if he wants something sort of that's um, more than documentation and testing, then yeah, possibly a proposal might be the way to go, but it's not clear at this stage that that is something that he's asking for. Um, but we can certainly uh, reach out to him and, and suggest that if that's what he wants, then a proposal would be the way forward. Yeah, because I guess that having a proposal means that we are going to have this feature provided out of the box from Streams, right? So something like, I don't know, applying an Hibernate annotation and it will will do the work for you. 
which could be more or less what is uh, described in this uh, discussion. Otherwise, I don't think that the proposal is needed if it's just about documenting somewhere the steps that Jakub described here. So we should make the decision if we want this feature out of the box in StreamZ, which will need a proposal, of course, or it's just about documenting and uh, yeah, we can have some documentation for that, but no proposal is needed. I, I think the reason behind uh, the proposal is that I kind of thought of it the other way around, like him creating a, a detailed proposal would make it easier for folks to decide if this is actually the thing that they want as a feature or not. And uh, it, it would include more details than what's in this, this discussion. But I think you're saying creating, like the proposal can be refused at any time, if I understand correctly, or like just didn't have traction. We, I mean, it's, we try to, you know, we try to avoid people sort of writing proposals for stuff that they're not prepared, you know, to actually, you know, implement. So, um, you know, rather than asking Ramesh to write a proposal for something that maybe he's, you know, only thinking about um, and you know, might not actually be wanting or needing, you know, anytime soon. Um, I think it's probably best just to say, look, you know, if if this is something that you want, then you know, write the proposal, and we can sort of discuss it in you know more detail, rather than sort of say, hey, spend a lot of time writing a proposal. Um, you know, even if he's not sort of actually convinced that that's the way forward for what he's trying to do there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I guess uh, I was more um going down the path if some contributors want to continue if Ramesh or somebody else from his team would like to continue down that path then and and they want this as part of StreamZ, then probably next step is a proposal but yeah i i i, I see your point the only other thing that occurred to me <clears throat> on this was um, whether or not there are other sort of pause related things that um, I, I don't know if if any other people in the community have asked from them in the past or whether people know. But obviously in connect, you have the ability to pause your connectors and basically say stop flowing data back and forth. If you're running an application, obviously you can take your application down and stop flowing data. Um, I wonder whether um, for people who are providing a managed Kafka service, whether some capability to be able to say, actually, we want to stop traffic coming into StreamZ, whether that would be useful or, or whether actually different people's deployments are so different that you, it's hard to pinpoint like a single point to say, oh, this is where we're gonna chop traffic. But that was something else that occurred to me where in Connect, it's actually quite easy to kind of stop flowing data back and forth to Kafka if you want to for a reason. But perhaps that's not so easy with some of the other application types if you're not in control of them. Yeah, I think, again, it will sort of come down to a proposal, really. It might be that um, the sort of the implementing this sort of on the, the cluster level, you know, is the, the thing that Ramesh wants to do. Um, so I think we need to just go back to him and suggest that uh, the proposal is the way forward. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, even because, uh, yeah, that's a good point from Kate about, uh, we know that in StreamZ, we don't have only the Kafka cluster. So there is the ecosystem of Kafka Connect, there could be the bridge. So posing the Kafka cluster just to mean posing the Kafka cluster and then having, uh, I don't know, errors coming from Kafka Connect because it's not able to connect or the bridge not able to connect, or it means posing everything deployed by the streaming operator, which in that case means posing the connectors or uh, scaling down to zero the bridge, uh, even cruise control, for example. So we should take into account that uh, your deployment is made not just by the, class, the Kafka cluster, but even all the other components that StreamZ is able to deploy, right? Yeah, that's a very good point. Okay, 
Anything more on this? Moving on to the uh, an open issue then. Um, so this seems to be related to um, open telemetry and the uh, Srimsy bridge. Yeah, Is somebody able to talk us through this? Yeah, it was added by me. Uh, no, just for uh, raising the point that um, yeah, finally um, working uh, offline with Alesh, we have this uh, kind of final proposal for having open telemetry, even if the title is not uh, okay. So it sounds to be the latest commit. Uh, I asked Alesh to update the title. But uh, yeah, uh, if you have time, uh, anyone, you know, um, having knowledge on open telemetry, it will be grouped to have some review. I will do that. So this is about adding open telemetry on the bridge and uh, replacing uh, open uh, tracing, which we know uh, is a kind of uh, deprecated project right now, even CNCF. So we are going to do this even for the operator, but for now the bits for the bridge seems to be ready. And uh, yeah, I just raised for having people from the community, if they have knowledge about open telemetry, to take a look at this. Okay, thanks, Paolo. Okay, so we've got a number of um, open proposals to uh to have a, a look at yeah the they were one. added by me uh just because i saw that there are a bunch of proposals that are in a kind of uh, uh, they are stuck so the first one is from you tom i guess that we need more review to this yeah i think um just having sort of uh three maintainers look at this is uh it would be good to get a few more eyes on this and you know either give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down or ask any questions so if uh, anyone interested in the canary could have a look that would be uh, very much appreciated I don't know if anyone's already had a look and has any questions they want to raise here Okay, the next one. I guess this is from from me. And uh, yeah, just as an update, um, I have to work on the feedback that I got from uh, from Tom, Tom's, and uh, and Jakub. Uh, so sorry for that, but I was busy on some other stuff uh, during the last two weeks. So I will be back on this uh, soon. And again, if other people have any ideas, any feedback, it would be great to have a review. This one's definitely on my list to try and get to. So I, I will try my best to review ASAP. Yeah, I already addressed the bunch of feedback from Jakub. So it's kind of the second big pass on the on this proposal. Yeah, I think when I last looked at it, it seemed to be shaping up quite well. And I guess that it's going to be the same for this one, which is about how to approval mechanism. So I have to double check what uh, Jakub uh, had as a feedback. And again, uh, because it's kind of related to the previous one. So if others... Yeah, does, does this one sort of um, depend on the previous one, basically? Was yeah. Did I get that right? Yep. OK. So I guess people can either sort of review them together or review if they're going to review one, then review that one first. And, you know, it doesn't matter so much if there's a little bit of a delay before they review this one. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay.
So Shabam doesn't seem to be on the call. Yeah, this um, um, today. I think there's some outstanding, a couple of questions from me outstanding on this. It's kind of linked to Paolo's one as well. It's to do with the auto scaling. Um, it's just another piece of that puzzle. But I think we've been through this a few times now, and it's yeah. I think there's just one or two outstanding things. So I'll ping him to see if we can get it wrapped up. Okay, thanks, Tom. So I added this one because I see that it's stuck, I don't know, since long time now. Uh, I pinged, I guess, the guy uh, yesterday or two days ago, just to know, yeah, if he's kind of working on this, it's moving forward, if, or, or one week ago, sorry, seven days ago. Uh, for now, no news. Uh, so at some point we should make a decision because I guess it's something that we want in the in stream, right? Yeah, I think we were um, very open to receiving this contribution. Um, yeah. So it would be good if uh, Yao Dong uh, is able to get back to it at some point. Um, but I guess we just have to wait for, for him. So this is one of mine that um, has been open for a very long time now, um, which I've not really had time to, I think I addressed quite a lot of the comments, but I don't, I think there are still some outstanding comments. And this work was based on um, some uh, sort of explorative development work that I did, um, which still exists in a branch somewhere, but would be, uh, difficult to, well, it would be not impossible, but it would be quite a lot of work to rebase. And it um, it wasn't completely working at the time I decided to sort of write the uh, this proposal. Though it's basically sort of um, in the same sort of direction as what's proposed here. Um, so I think we need to decide what to do with this. Um, Obviously, I can go and try to um, address the outstanding proposals, but again, it's it's only had three people look at it, so um, it would be nice to have a bit more review, I guess, as a way of getting this um, restarted. Uh, so if anyone's able to have a look at that, that would be great. I don't know if anyone has any other comments about that one. I've obviously already reviewed, but I definitely plus one to getting this pushed along if we can, because I think it will definitely make things nicer if we can sort out the C abstraction stuff, because there's quite a few issues I feel like that are kind of, as we've been doing the issue review, we've been sort of saying, oh, well, a lot of this could be made better once we've done the CA abstraction thing. <laughs> so yeah, I like mean, there's good improvements that could be made if we have the time yes it's it's quite a large piece of work unfortunately yeah. um, and it's difficult to see how to break it up into smaller pieces um, so but yeah I think the the first step is to just get a few more um, eyes on it um, and check to see that people think this is the right way of addressing the problems
And the last one. I thought this might be the last one. So this one's stacked behind the previous one. Um, Do you mean it depends on it or it's just older? Um, so yeah, so basically where we'd got to, I think the last comment that we made on this proposal was um, we'd kind of gotten to a place where we sort of agreed the contents of the proposal, but then we had a discussion in one of the community calls about it. And basically a lot of the proposal was kind of introducing new bits and pieces or in order to achieve what we wanted, we had to make certain additions, I guess, to CRs and things. And the discussion that we had at the time, because the other proposal was progressing at the same time as we were discussing this one, we kind of said, OK, well, let's hold off on making more progress on this proposal until we've decided what we're doing with the CA abstractions. And then we can make sure that whatever we propose for the Connect API will then line up with whatever we've proposed for the CA stuff. So I basically paused okay. working on the proposal because of that. OK. Sorry. So I guess that just come on, No, I was just asking. Uh, I don't remember all the comments, of course, on the on the proposal. But um, uh, so it's blocked, and we say that just during a community call. So do we want to highlight this with an additional comment on the proposal PR so that we can track that it's actually blocked by the other? What do you think? Yeah, I feel like I maybe added a comment at the time but it's possible that i meant to and didn't yeah okay I, I will go through the comment and see if there is a clearly stated that it's blocked by that okay otherwise uh, maybe we should add the sentence uh, for saying that and tom is already doing that i see <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay thank you tom and i'll just reorder these so that Actually, that's not what I wanted to do. Yeah, it looks like I never added a comment, so I think that one from Tom is helpful. Okay, so I think we're done now on the open proposals, but if um, people are able to review one or more of those four at the top, that would be really appreciated. So the next item on the agenda is about um, Kafka exporter CVEs. I don't know who added this. Is no one wanting to own up to it? Okay, well, it's difficult to talk about things if uh, if we don't know exactly what people's uh, issue was there. So I guess we can remove that one. So Ahmed, you're next. Yeah, um, I wanted to share um, the experience we had in Canada with roadmaps and see if that will be useful for Strimzy. Um, I know there is an existing project, a GitHub project that you are using to plan versions, if I understand that project correctly. Um, so I was wondering if you would like for me to yeah, share more about how Knative was doing road mapping there. So let me see if I can find I think it's underneath the org itself. This is the roadmap that you're referring to, I think, yeah? Yes, correct. 
Okay, and this um, is the one from K Native. So, what what do you think are the the differences yeah. and the advantages? I guess. Yeah. So probably it's uh, due to the how the governance of roadmap, of K Native was was happening. Working groups there were asked to do a periodical uh, status updates to the TOC. Um, about the progress of their roadmap. And initially that started with sharing three sections. So what was done, uh, what is uh, in progress and what is planned next um, for the near term, uh, short term and long term. And going through that showed that there is, this is not very useful in that structure because the, the predictability of what's gonna happen in the short uh, three month and six months is basically, you know, guesswork. Um, and it, it was more useful to understand more or less what's going on in progress as an implementation. And this is one thing, the other thing is what needs more fleshing out so maybe proposals or ideas or features that um, needs more eyes on the design of, of, of those features uh, Hime. and that's why we ended up with a, a roadmap uh, a github project that's basically um, what you see right here right now um, from left to right starting from in design um, in design it are features that 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 needs more fleshing out um, that uh, people can still do investigations for, um, but and they maybe consist of one or two big items. And once they, they are fleshed out, they can be ready to work. And that was useful for contributors who would like to pick up on things of interest. Um, for example, I'm a Kafka interested engineer and I would like to pick up tasks around the Kafka components of eventing. Uh, so I, I would be able to go to the ready to work and see any of the roadmap items that are around Kafka. Uh, pick one of these or um, yeah, party on one of these. And the typical in progress and done. Um, and what was interesting as well is the first column, the icebox or wish list which basically addressed the, uh, an issue that we faced earlier, uh, people showing up and asking for new features or um, asking for um, um, new updates in the project without actually um, having the capacity to implement them. And the project as, as so Knative had to decide whether it makes sense for the feature to be implemented or does this feature make sense as part of the project regardless of do we have enough capacity to actually implement it or not and if the feature made sense uh, for the project it will be accepted and if there are no capacity for it it will be put into the ice box and wish list um, which means that some proposals would be rejected uh, because it doesn't make sense um, and some proposals would be accepted regardless of having enough people to work on it, but still the project does not commit, like the maintainers do not commit to actually implement them because the focus is somewhere else. And we would be reviewing this roadmap on some cadence, like every couple of releases or something similar to that. Um, if you scroll right, Yeah, there is, this is also specific to, to Knative, but just like uh, in case you're wondering about this, uh, we had an experimental feature um, graduation process, if you may, um, where experimental features would be added uh, as an alpha, beta, uh, et cetera. And uh, this was also one of way to track the graduation of experimental feature um, or um, which can end up yeah, being um, stable feature or maybe even dropped totally. 
but yeah, that's more or less like. Okay, thanks for the description. So if we look at sort of uh, the way the Strimsy roadmap is currently, obviously it's uh, it's sort of being described by version and, you know, sort of the features that are um, going to be or have been released in a particular version, which um, I guess makes makes it a bit sort of clearer to people who are consuming, you know, Strimsy as users as to, you know, sort of uh, when a particular feature um, got released and therefore you, what they would need to upgrade to in order to use it. But it's a lot less clear from sort of the development point of view, I guess, about um, what's in the funnel um, or the pipeline uh, and, you know, progress yeah. through that pipeline. So I think um, it would be fair to say that they're addressing slightly different things. Um, but I do quite like this um this dashboard uh i can you know you from the development point of view i can sort of see the the value of it um what do other people think i had i guess two questions um i haven't really looked at how projects work in github so the tiles that we have in the roadmap are those somehow related to separate issues that have been created or are those specific like project features that have been created separate? How, is there any connection there or not? I think you you can add cards. Right, okay. Um, and I think they can be related to issues, but I admit I'm not um, completely okay. okay with it. When you add a card, this is, this is like a, a draft issue if you may it doesn't exist anywhere except on the roadmap this is the card but then the expectation is that you can convert that to an issue at some point um, or you can directly add an issue so like these these all the cards here they're not issues but if you go to the um, k native road uh, project um, you would see that some of them have this draft symbol and some and the others are uh, issues so everything with the with the green circle is an issue. Okay. And the other question was, can you move the cards between different projects? So I guess what I was wondering was, given that there is a slightly different focus for the um, Strimsy one, would there be any possibility to have like almost two projects, one which is the kind of, these are the features that made it into these different versions, and then one which is more of a kind of, this is what we're working on, but we're not necessarily committing to which feature it's, which version it's going to go into yet, whether you can move them between or whether you'd have to sort of create, recreate them if you wanted to move them between projects. I, I think we can't add an issue to multiple projects, if I understand correctly. Um, right now, I think an issue should belong in a single project. Yeah, I don't know um, quite how that would work to be honest, but we could. We could have an explore of that idea. I mean, looking at the K native one, you can sort of see that their InDesign will probably sort of match our, you know, sort of proposal discussion phase. Um, yeah. And you can also see that there's sort of a a mapping with sort of their experimental features would be our sort of features that are gated in sort of alpha or beta levels. Um, and that would obviously sort of provide an overview to people as to sort of, yeah, the progress of a, a particular issue that they might care, a feature that they might care about. Um, so sort of where it was. Yeah, I think to me, the interesting piece of information that we're perhaps missing is um, at the point where, a, say, a large feature, has, the proposal has been approved and it's kind of merged, then or even something that where the issue has been discussed and we've said, yeah, yeah, we, it'd be good to have somebody to work on this. And we perhaps marked it as help wanted until the point in time where you have someone's raised a PR against 
Strimsy. It's there's no way to know as far as I know, like whether anyone's working on it. If you're I guess if you have certain rights within the project, you must be able to assign issues to yourself. Um, but I guess not everyone has the right to do that. And obviously you could comment on them saying like, oh, I'm working on this, but it might be interesting if we had a way to kind of know which issues in our backlog are in progress currently. Yeah, exactly. One uh, quick question. I'm not an expert on using, uh, to be honest, uh, GitHub project. Um, maybe I don't know a question for uh, for all of you, if you know. Um, so if you, in StreamZ, we have a proposal, okay? And uh, yeah, I agree that it's uh, it's okay with the lane in design that we have in, uh, in Knative. Uh, but it's possible that then, uh, and we can add a card uh, with the link to the proposal, as far as I understand. But then if the proposal becomes, so it's, it's broken in different issues, because uh, yeah, there are, I don't know, two or three pieces that you have to implement for making that proposal, pr proposal into the project. It means that uh, your proposal is going to move, your card related to the proposal is going to move to maybe ready to work and then in progress, but then you have to create uh, different cards for uh, addressing, I don't know, the two or three issues that you need for implementing the proposal and can they be, I don't know, linked somehow? So to say, these three cards are related to this proposal because this proposal was broken in these three pieces of work. Is that possible, something like that? Or there is a different approach in this case? So if you looked at the, the board there, you'll see that the cards are more or less like high level, uh, like call them similar to maybe Jira do, does Epic. So like this data pipeline, this is the high level issue that is tracking them. And the way we sometimes did that is using um, check boxes linked to all the sub issues. So I think in the description, you will find multiple, yeah, these two check boxes, for example, these are actually GitHub issues. Um, and that would be how you break down the card into smaller ones. We we try to not make the roadmap view very coarse grained and detailed. We, we wanted more or less the high level view there. Uh, okay, this, uh, this answers my question. So there is anyway a way to, to link, even because you can write whatever you want when you write a card, right? So you have this. Yes list with the, the related issues okay and and tom you just showed yeah exactly how currently github interprets these sub as two tasks and then when you go to one of them it shows that it's linked to this other issue yeah tracked in that that github just does that directly when you add a, a checkbox list with links to the issues here okay, you cool. mean yes exactly so if we added another one then this tracking issue would get updated yes correct so i think that's exactly what you're after isn't it palo yes yeah thanks ahmed yep sure does anyone else have any thoughts about this So maybe so, what I can do next. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Tom. Go on, Ahmed. I, I just uh, thought that maybe I would propose something out of this if the initial idea is appealing, how to maybe enhance or yeah have a, some improvements and propose it for you all to be more concrete about what exactly needs to change or what exactly are we proposing to change. Yeah, I think it would be good. So I, you know, I, I think that there's something in this that we should have a look at. Uh, I think it could be quite useful. Um, but I think we need a, 
a bit of a clearer idea about exactly what changes we want to make before just launching in and you know trying to make them yeah um so if you would be able to just sort of write up a sort of a, a one or possibly two page sort of summary of of you know sort of some concrete um proposal it doesn't actually have to be a strimsy proposal necessarily but just as a discussion in a, a future uh, community meeting i think that would be that would be really useful yeah yeah that makes sense because i also don't think that we should just like plunge into taking that blindly so yeah i totally agree okay There are no further points on that. Um, we've got an item here about the incubation proposal. Power yeah, it was me. Yeah, it was me. Just for uh, yeah, providing the update that finally we have got um, a uh, TOC sponsor. So we have an uh, Herring Boyd to sponsor the so moving to stream is it to the incubation so i guess that at some point uh we should start the due diligence and all the other stuff that we need to moving forward uh yeah just as an update to the community so this is moving forward at in some shape okay great thanks for the update And was it also you, Paolo, on the survey? Yes, just to remember that, uh, yeah, today um, will be kind of the last day for the survey. Um, yeah, it will be closed uh, tomorrow as we decided during one of these community calls. And I guess that at some point we will uh, we will get in touch with CNCF in order to wrap up the results and publish them. Yeah, I can do that. Is it worth um, doing a final tweet just to um, yeah. raise awareness that Good if point. people want to fill in the survey, this is their last opportunity to do so? Yeah, absolutely. I will do right after the call. Great. Thank you. Thanks. I will do on Twitter and even on the Slack channel, maybe. Uh, what do you think about uh, the streams users mailing list as well? Yeah, why not? Okay. Does anybody have anything else they want to bring up? Okay, well, if that's it, then thanks very much for coming, folks. Thanks, everyone. Thank thanks, Thank folks. You.